It's finally here, Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack, however the controller isn't, so today we're going to be going through a whole bunch of alternative controller options for you to play Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack, specifically the Nintendo 64 games. <laughs> I made this video last week, and it didn't go well. It did not go well because I tested it with Super Mario 3D All-Stars. And the problem with Super Mario 3D All-Stars is that the game remaps A, B, A buttons and B buttons. The B button causes Mario to jump, and the Y button causes him to attack, as opposed to on a traditional N64 controller where the B button is to attack and the A button is to jump. On this game, they've remapped both A and B to be the jump buttons. Many of the controllers that I reviewed, I was just unable to do. I've also reached out to a couple of manufacturers and developers for products that they offer and what their workarounds for this was, and it seemed like way too much for perspective stuff, so I'm just gonna go ahead and buy the NSO Plus expansion pack. Okay, so because my thing just renewed, uh, I'm now saving Two dollars and seven cents. I'm not going to show my sensitive information, but a neat thing is uh, I had enough gold points for a ten dollar discount. Well, that's cool. Oh, it's a separate download. OK, let's also go ahead and download the Sega Genesis collection, because why not? I kind of like that it's a full icon and not that, you know, I need to go over here and click this. But it would make sense that it does the whole, you know, checking online to see if this software could be played sort of thing. Oh, yep, there it is. Checking if the software could be played. Nintendo 64, Nintendo Switch Online. And I could also move things around, yes? So let's go ahead and make a tier list. There we go, my tier list is complete and it's perfect grid, love it. <laughs> let's hop into Super Mario 64. It's me, Mario. Hello. Plus is the start button, got it. Minus to suspend the game. I could create suspension points or save states, whatever they call them. I don't know what's with that little black border at the top. Okay, so just starting off, Y seems to be C left, X seems to be C down, B is B, A is A. Oh, user guide, there we go. The R plus the four faces are the C buttons. This isn't a very good layout. Let's go into the button mapping and we have the option to change things around. All right, so I made a preset so my right Joy-Con acts a little bit more like Super Mario 3D All-Stars, which is basically the mapping that you see on screen here. Fortunately, I don't have, you know, the two buttons that would be on the top right of X and A, which would then be the C right and C up. This game doesn't really use all of the buttons, so let's go ahead and find something that's going to be a little bit more, you know, intuitive. Like Zelda. Oh man, those wall textures look as bad as ever. It's like you have a 3D character model just on top of a background. Like it's just placed there, you know what I mean? Okay, so everyone's polygons are updated. Uh, kinda. <laughs> Yeah, the polygons of the actual sword itself look great. Uh, the sprite image, not as much. Okay, so I wanted to progress far enough in the game that way I had three items and one of them being the slingshot. And checking out the user guide, we can now see the controls. Is the exact same control scheme that was present in Super Mario 64. The right stick doesn't feel bad, and that might just come from the fact of I've played a lot of uh, Ocarina of Time on the GameCube. Okay, so I've messed around with this for a while, and a couple of things. One, it's an absolute must to remap. And this is what I'm gonna recommend, that A and B are in the same muscle memory, and then you're gonna have X and A act like C left and C down. Again, the muscle memory and the button mapping is very difficult when you go to the home screen. Thank God for suspend points. I made one literally before I started recording. Okay, so I'm gonna have access to two of my C buttons on the face, right? So I would want to make those the two that I'm going to use all the time. And it would use the right stick as an option to access all of them. All right, so good news and bad news. I recorded probably another hour, hour and 10 minutes of footage. Uh, but because of uh, an audio issue, the audio gate was clipping in way too early because the volume wasn't put up. But now you should be able to hear me. Okay, let's sum up everything that I recorded. I went through every one of the controllers I already own, and ordered several additional controllers, including N64 controllers that go into an N64 port with a dongle that goes into USB, different dongles that go into USB, 
N64 controllers that go into USB directly, alternative N64 controllers that go into USB directly, wireless alternative N64 controllers that go in N64 and then the dongle, GameCube controllers, first party and third party with GameCube to switch dongles, first party and third party. And I have some bad news, some really, really bad news. There is one inherent problem to the mapping on Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack N64 games. And that problem comes down to the fact of there is no way to map a physical button to C up and C right. So therefore, every single controller that has a C up and C right will not be able to act like C up and C right. Unless, and I did reach out to Mayflash, because you know, I've been in cahoots with them for a while and they've sent me over some stuff and I've also just reached out whenever I had issues and they're very responsive, like really top-notch company. I also reached out to Hyperkin and I just haven't heard back from them at all. So when it comes to dongles, they have the ability to take the inputs from the N64 and then remap them. It could be between this, between the Bluetooth adapter that we've covered so many times that allows you to remap and play like an Xbox controller on your Nintendo Switch and things like that. Unless one of them comes out with a way to map C up to act like C stick going up and to map C right to act like C stick going right, it seems like the Nintendo 64 controller is going to be the only controller that has that built-in functionality. So boom, paywall. So start ranting about it on the internet. At the same time, do you really need all that? Like with the button mapping, I'm able to use B as B, A as A, Z as Z targeting, right? L to show and hide the map. R, shoulder R as the shield. The right Z will act like my face modifier. And out of all the controllers that I've reviewed, this one, the Retro Fighters Brawler 64, I think it's like 30 bucks on their website and 37 on Amazon. Fantastic controller. Can't say enough good things about this. Shout out to them. And it maps as a pro controller. So something that I ended up doing with the Joy-Con and also with this controller is inverting Z and ZR's mapping. ZR is going to properly act like the shield. That just comes from how I'm used to playing with the GameCube versions of these games because I've just been playing those for the last, I don't know, however many years. And also, if we're going to be honest here, if you're playing this game, you're not constantly using all three of your C items. For me, I always made C right act like the ocarina. And I used C left and C down as whatever specific dungeon thing I needed. And C down was typically my long range thing. My shoulder R is going to be acting like my front face modifier, which is just going to be RA. And I kind of like it being RA because, you know, if I need to pull out my Ocarina real fast, boom, there I go. C up being minus, actually kind of a little handy to, you know, make my suspend points. And C right being start is a little off-putting. I don't know how I feel about that or if I would want to remap that to something else. The Power A Nintendo Switch GameCube controller worked really, really nicely as far as my ability to use my shoulder buttons and L and R buttons, also still with home screenshot plus minus. This is a really quality Bluetooth controller. I like it. I think it was 50 bucks though, and at that point, now we're at the same price tag. If you're just playing Mario Kart and you just want that feel of original Mario Kart, you can get these cheapo controllers that plug in USB. A two pack on Amazon right now is $19. So for 40 bucks, you can have four of these controllers. But at the same time, I think for maybe five bucks more, you can get a Switch one. I don't remember how much this one was. This was a Hori one. This is the Hori pad that allows you to take the D-pad off. I reviewed it many moons ago. It really comes down to, you know, do you want to drop $40 on that authentic, <laughs> on the authentic bad analog stick? But then there was a weird thing that I experienced that I wasn't expecting to experience, which is the different feel of handheld mode. And different Joy-Cons have different feels. And also different switches have different feels. Camera 2 has been getting a lot of use recently. People may hold their switch in handheld mode like this with the side buttons, in which case you'd probably want to do that remapping. And in case you just wanted to see my full remap, but I'm basically doing this. 
I'm making Y equals B, B equals A, A equals X, X equals Y, and swapping the Z buttons. And that's what I've found to be comfortable for Ocarina of Time. That way, you know, I have this as my shield, this as my Z targeting, and I can do this because these are sort of the two buttons that you're gonna hold down as, I call it like, you know, modifiers. Not everyone holds their switch this way. Some people tend to hold it more downward, especially if you're holding it directly upright and you're trying to support that weight. You may hold it like this, and in which case you may not want to remap because then having the A button there and the B button, because you want, you know, your sword button to be the most accessible, and then A there and then these two are out of the way, and then your shoulder buttons are going to act like you want them to. I mean, you may want to swap Z, L, and L. Also, if you were to use a Switch Grip Pro, which I currently don't own a Switch Grip Pro for the OLED, or massive Joy-Cons like these bad boys, I'm sure you've seen these, these are by Hori. These are non-powered Joy-Cons with turbo functionality and everything you could possibly need. This makes it feel more like a Pro Controller, but it does not support remapping. So because of that, now if I'm using B, B is always my B, I can't remap it to Y. I do like being able to use that as shield though. So I'm probably just gonna wait till the switch grip comes out for the OLED, which it's just off by ever so slightly. I'm sure if you had, you know, some sandpaper, you can make it work. Don't tell Phil from switch grip I said that. But yeah, if I'm just playing in handheld mode, I'm probably gonna want that remap. And out of all the controllers that I've tested, the only ones that support remapping are the Joy-Cons, the actual Pro Controller, and the Brawler 64. So if you want a slightly more N64 feel, go with this bad boy, which is 30 bucks. If you just want some cheap, dirty, easy controllers for Mario Kart, pick four of these POSs up for under $40, prime eligible right now. And I'm waiting to hear back from Hyperkin and Mayflash on their adapters. I don't know if anyone else makes one in which I'd be able to remap things more effectively. I basically made this video to be the idea of, hey, you wanna go and you wanna buy some USB controllers to work with your Nintendo Switch, you're gonna have limited functionality, unfortunately. And honestly, you're better off just remapping your Pro Controller or Joy-Cons. Really are. I, I, wish, I wish that wasn't the outcome. I wish I could tell you, you know, you could plug this in and remap it and have all the face buttons work just fine, but unfortunately that's not the case. Well, my dudes, if you came into this video thinking that you wanted to buy a Nintendo 64 USB controller for your Nintendo Switch, and now knowing the limited functionality made that purchase completely pointless and you're gonna cancel on Amazon, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you managed to get the Nintendo Switch 64 controller before it sold out in 20 minutes, either this time or two weeks ago, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're getting the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're not getting it, hit the thumbs up button down below. Heck, if you made it this far in the video, hit the thumbs up button down below. <laughs> Bye.